The High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, or HARP, is an ionospheric research program jointly funded by the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Navy, the University of Alaska, and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA. Built by the BAE Advanced Technologies, its purpose is to analyze the ionosphere and investigate the potential for developing ionospheric enhancement technology for radio communications and surveillance. The HARP program operates a major Arctic facility named the HARP Research Station on an Air Force-owned site near Kekona, Alaska. The most prominent instrument at the HARP station is the Ionospheric Research Instrument, or IRI, a high-powered radio frequency transmitter facility operating in the high frequency or HF band. The IRI is used to temporarily excite a limited area of the ionosphere. Other instruments, such as a VHF or UHF radar, a flux magnetometer, digisond, and an induction magnetometer are used to study the physical processes that occur in the excited region. Work on the HARP station began in 1993. The current working IRI was completed in 2007, and its prime contractor was the BAE Systems Advanced Technologies. As of 2008, HARP had incurred around $250 million in tax-funded construction and operating costs. The HARP project directs a 3.6 MW signal in the 2.8 to 10 MHz region of the HF band into the ionosphere. The signal may be paused or continuous. Then, effects of the transmission and any recovery period can be examined using associated instrumentation including VHF and UHF radars, HF receivers, and optical cameras. According to the HARP team, this will advance the study of basic natural processes that occur in the ionosphere under the natural but much stronger influence of solar interaction and how the natural ionosphere affects radio signals. This will enable scientists to develop methods to mitigate these effects to improve the reliability or performance of communication and navigation systems, which would have a wide range of uses, civilian and military, such as an increased accuracy of GPS navigation and advances in underwater and underground research and applications. This may lead to improved methods for submarine communication or an ability to remotely sense and map mineral content of the terrestrial subsurface and perhaps underground complexes of regions or countries, among other things. All this is not conspiracy theory, but rather an officially admitted fact. However, what they would never admit to, of course, is all the cataclysmic events which could be caused with HARP. By heating the ionosphere, high-pressure regions can be created in the atmosphere. These could be used to manipulate many different types of climate systems. For example, moving arctic cold or desert heat to places where it shouldn't be, or steering hurricanes and tornadoes to cause Hurricane Katrina-like events. Also reflecting the harp waves off the ionosphere into the Earth causes an increase in pressure in the Earth, which eventually is released in the form of an earthquake. Examples of this are the Haiti earthquake of 2010, the Christchurch New Zealand earthquake of 2011, and many others. The one I would like to point your attention to is the Japanese earthquake of March 11, 2011. This video shot right before the earthquake occurred clearly shows the effect of the harp waves on the atmosphere as they are being reflected off the ionosphere into the ground. On April 7, 2011, a so-called aftershock occurred in the same spot off the coast of Japan. It was a 7.4 magnitude. During the event, strange flashes of light were recorded in the direction of the epicenter. These lights are actually huge lightning bolts. As the harp waves are reflected off the ionosphere, they are not only building pressure in the ground, but are actually building up a charge in the ionosphere. When this charge is great enough to overcome the resistance of the atmosphere, a discharge occurs in the form of massive lightning. All these events were caused by a harp facility of the type found in Gekona, Alaska, which is about 1300 feet long. Now, however, a completely new type of harp array has been built in China, in the Gobi Desert, as part of the so-called Chinese Area 51. Coordinates are in the info of this video. It is a grid of maintenance roads about 20 miles long. In between the roads are hundreds of small harp arrays, each about 65 feet long. 
This amounts to a total area much greater than the Alaska-type harp. Furthermore, there is not just one such grid, but actually three, and they seem to keep building more. This takes us to the prophecies of the end of the world. This is what the Bible has to say on the subject. Revelation 16, verses 17 through 20. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices, and thunders, and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since man were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Notice the connection that the Bible makes between the earthquake and lightning and thunder. It resembles exactly what we saw in the April 7 Japanese earthquake. Also, there are many references in the Holy Quran of a great event on the last day on earth where the mountains will sink, the dead will be resurrected, and all will be taken up to God to be judged for their sins. In conclusion, obviously there is no planet X, Nibiru, a brown dwarf star, or any kind of magical radiation emitted from the galactic center. All there is, is a bunch of psychopaths playing God who know that their time is up and they are ready to drag everyone along with them down to hell.